Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups, and today I have another breakup story to share, and if you have a breakup story you would like to share, please visit writemac.com, W-R-I-T-E-M-A-C.com, and send your story in. I'll take a look at it and possibly reply through a YouTube video just like this. And if you like the video, throw me a thumbs up. And if you don't, throw me a thumbs down. And if you have a comment to make to help this individual out or someone else out there with a similar story, please put it in the notes below or the comments below. Let's get into it. (laughs) Why do I still think about it one year later? So that you've given me a title. Cool, man. Thanks for the help. Why do I still think about it one year later? Why do I still think about my ex one year later? One year later is is a long time. So let's get into this. This This is a good question that I think some other people are going through and I don't come across it a lot actually because there's a lot of fresh wounds out there. This is one of those wounds that you keep picking. Hello Mac, thanks for reading this. I've been following you for a good year since I got hurt. Well thanks man, that's a a compliment in itself. I appreciate that because I've really only been steady on this channel for maybe a year and three or four months. I think something like that. In late 2017, I met this girl. We dated for about three months. It was great in the beginning. We went out a lot. So you had a three-month relationship that you're still not over a year later. We need to get to the bottom of this. It was great in the beginning. We went out a lot together, and I brought her into my circle of friends. So you consider them your circle of friends. Okay. I would sleep over her place every weekend because I would get lit with her and my friends. Okay. That means... That means to get drunk or you're blazing some, some herb. Uh, I know what it means. It's, it's the new term, right? My nephew who's 18, was, he's always like, oh, it was lit up in there. It was lit. So I used to be a nightlife promoter. Cool, man. So I'm pretty known by the community of Boston and the nightlife scene. Okay. Wicked. Go socks, right? Uh, as time went by, I started feeling insecure, jealous, and needy with her. Yeah, the, that's a cocktail for disaster, right? Insecure, jealous, and needy, all three. I was always chasing her, and I'd always feel upset with her because she wasn't displaying the affection I wanted back. Okay, so this is a key statement right here. Um, being that it's been a year and you haven't gotten over this, and you, this is what's really good about writing your story about st- story out. This is a clear statement. She wasn't displaying the affection I wanted back. The question I would have for you is, is this something that's happened to you before in other relationships that you haven't got enough affection? Because um, this could be rooted from something from a past relationship or even, you know, a childhood. So you're, it's a complete lack of attention and affection. So you, you've nailed it down to what the problem was and why you were upset. I was weak. I know, okay, have you been weak in other relationships? That would be another question. If we were doing a live coaching, this is what we'd get into. I noticed she started disrespecting me, so I started to give her space. No one likes to be disrespected, but everyone has a different definition of what disrespect is. So that would be another question I'd have. In what way did she disrespect you? Was it valid or not valid? End of December 2017 into January 2018, we were at one of my friend's birthdays at the bar. I got really lit, and I saw her dancing with a guy. I got so jealous and called her a hoe. I haven't heard that word in a while. Uh, Yeah, so I got so jealous I called her a hoe. Yeah, that didn't go over well in public. I saw her dancing with a guy. I got so jealous I called her a hoe in front of everyone. In front of everyone. That is unforgivable. I mean, you you not only you humiliated her, you upset her, and it was probably a bit traumatic that you did that. Now, you think that's a, that's a big word to use, but people remember how you make them feel. And if you do something excruciatingly traumatic or embarrassing or in front of a group, it's very hard for them to let that go. Afterwards, she basically cut me off and told me she was sick of my bullshit. Can you blame her? I think you crossed the line on that one. She started seeing one of my boys in the circle of friends. And you know what? That's not cool. But the fact that she's single, it says something about your friend. Uh, You know, me personally, if I got a friend uh, in my circle of friends, I would never date one of my friend's exes just as my own set of morals, my own set of values, no matter how attracted she was. uh, It wouldn't feel right for a variety of reasons, let alone that's my buddy. 
and I know it would affect our friendship. So I don't know how close this friend's friend is, but that says a lot about your friend. I don't know if she was doing this just to hurt you. Again, this would, this, this would add to the idea that you're having trouble getting over this a year later because there's some different dynamics to this. Not only do you feel betrayed by her, but you probably feel betrayed by your friend also. Fuck, you just wrote the next sentence. I felt betrayed and really hurt when... And betrayals, that's something that's hard to let go of. If you're betrayed, you can't just go, oh, I'm going to let that go. Because betrayal means someone crossed a line that you feel like you'd never cross yourself. And that really bugs the fuck out of people because they can't understand why someone would do that to them because they would never do it to them. Everyone has their own values and identity, man. So you don't necessarily have to forgive them 100%, but at, sometimes, at some point you have to find a way to let it go and go, yeah, that's an individual I don't really want to be friends with anymore, and I don't want to carry it and just be done with it. I really hurt, and really hurt when the rest of my friends told me they are dating now. You know, like, and you think like, oh, some of my friends should be on my side. Friends, a lot of times, especially if you guys all party and stuff, and you were, you know, if you were only with this girl for three months, it's not the same as if you were with her for two or three years. I'm not saying it wasn't wrong or right, uh, but it's different. And your friends probably just want to stay neutral. You know, they don't want to take sides. I knew I needed to move on and work on myself no matter how much it hurts. I started distancing myself from my circle of friends because I don't want to see them. Um, yeah, and you're probably a little bit embarrassed, which is understandable. I'm not telling you you should feel that way, but I started reading books on breakups, going out with new friends, meeting new girls, stuck to my fitness, traveling by myself. Good. Traveling by yourself is big, man. Took a class on a on for a career change. Went skydiving. Cut drinking for a month. How did it feel to cut drinking for a month? Um, what I'd ask is, did any of these things really provide something that you were really surprised about? You should measure the results from them. Ran a half marathon. Okay. Took on a new job role. Do you like the new job? Quit my nightlife job. Was that a good move? Um, I did everything I could think of to work on myself, but deep inside, I still thought about how much they hurt me. Okay, keyword, they. You probably didn't even realize you wrote that. They meaning your circle of friends, they meaning uh, the, the friend and the new, and your ex. So this isn't just about your ex, it's about your friend also. Every time I did go out, I would, I would see them together and it sucks. That would suck. Um, the only way to get around that is to go to other places, you know, that, that's the only thing. And I don't think you're running from the situation, but you certainly don't want to keep, you know, um, taking the scab off the wound, right? I, if it was me and this was my particular situation, I would, I would avoid places where I would run into them because it would be too painful for me. And it would just, basically what happens is, if you've, if you've had, again, I'll use the word traumatic, if you've had a traumatic experience or something you feel really ill about, every time you see him, it pops back up like a bobber on a fishing line. So it's just, it, it just comes back every time you relive it, every time you run into him. Every time I did go out, I would see them together. It sucks. As time went by, it definitely hurts less. I know in mid-28, she tried to talk to me, but I ignored her. Uh, why did you ignore her? Um... My ex-boy tried to act like nothing happened and be friends with me, but I didn't accept that. And that's your choice. Um, and like I said, his morals, his values, he's going to validate that in some way. And if you don't want to accept that, that's fine. But at some point, you probably have to forgive him and move forward. I haven't had a friend do something like that to me. I've had a friend that owed me a lot of money, and I just had to chalk it up Um and just go, you know what, if he's around, it's fine. That's who, the kind of person he is. Because when you hold on to stuff like that, it holds you back from moving forward in other parts of your life. And he called me a child. Well, fuck, fuck him for calling you a child. That's just him wanting, wanting his way. Like I said, you don't need to accept it, but you need to forgive him some way internally and move forward. I mean, you were with her for three months. You're upset. Um, I don't know if you're necessarily a child for that. Sometimes I still think about how much it hurts. But what I really want is to stop thinking about it. Okay, so you've, you've, you've went out of your way to seek change. I would change your environment. 
This sounds drastic. I would consider a move out of the area you live in, and it would force you into some new habits, some new places to visit. If you're a young guy, a fresh start somewhere new, this wouldn't be running away from anything. But it sounds like um, that would be something drastic to consider, but it, w it would be refreshing probably. Or you mentioned traveling. Maybe go on a long trip for two or three months where you just aren't even in contact with any of those people. If you could do a backpacking trip, something like that, a retreat, something where you just fully get away and you're not just uh, reliving the moment over and over again. So those are two things I would suggest. A lot of times when I say to someone, consider moving, it's, it's specifically for people that aren't married or don't have kids or don't have obligations and people come up with all these excuses. But really, if you're having a lot of trouble getting over it, there's, it's not just the X, it's the cloud with the circle of friends and the idea that you're getting rid of, uh, rid of a lifestyle that you used to have and just moving to a new city and a new town and a fresh start. That doesn't mean you couldn't move back to where you are. It just means taking a sabbatical from that area and it changes everything for you. Uh, I just want to move on and be happy, work on things that matter. It's been over a year. This is ridiculous. How do I 100% forget? You're never going to 100% forget. You're going to... You know, it's going to come in and out of your mind. Um, but like I said, the best thing to do is you're associating places and people with the breakup and you're running into those people repeatedly. So you got to eliminate those positions where those are the triggers. And by moving somewhere, that would help. Um, but the idea that you're going to 100% forget, don't, don't fight it in that way. The other thing is when something comes up, attempt to reframe it. Go look, okay, so for example, your boy... Um, said you're being a child, just go, well, that's how, you know, in your mind go, well, however you want to deal with it, instead of accepting that or taking that personal, you could say, I have no interest in being friends with him again, and I'm probably better off knowing that the, he was this kind of individual, and now I can just move forward and know his true colors, rather than, I can't believe he said that to me. Reframe it into a positive thing. You know who the person is. Now you don't need to associate with them. If he comes up to you and says what's up, you could just be very short and, and move forward. So I hope that helps you. If this continues on, I would, I would suggest doing a live coaching session with myself or another coach out there. And just so you can get an hour or two hours just to divulge everything that happened. And sometimes uh, spewing that out is like a soulful throw up. Sounds nasty, right? But you know what I mean? Like you, all of a sudden you just sort of like two hours later, like, oh, God, I had to get that all out. You just get all the little things that happened. And I did it when I was in a breakup. I talked to someone, um, told her this, it's like an energy healer or something like that. And the lady talked to me for two hours and I just talked about my breakup. This was like 10 years ago. I remember afterwards just feeling a lot better that I just had someone listen to me for that long. So I hope that helps you. Please visit rightmac.com if you've got a breakup story. Otherwise, thank you for supporting the channel.